what I am saying is men ought to do the right thing. That uh, at, the, at the basis of the natural law is, is one precept, which is do good and avoid evil. Mm-hmm. The first thing that we apprehend is, is being, right, is okay. existence. Uh, the next thing that we apprehend, and this is the first thing we apprehend through our practical reason, you know, mm-hmm. which is oriented toward action, mm-hmm. is good. Doing, when, okay. when you do something, you want to do good and you want to avoid evil. And so what I'm saying is that marriage and family, the end of marriage being the begetting and education of children and secondarily mm-hmm. the, the mutual support of the spouses, is good for man. So I, I'm not saying this isn't Michael's crazy yeah. view. I'm saying this is a natural part. It's why this has existed throughout all of human society mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's why we are all inclined to do it. Mm-hmm. Whether or do not you, Pearl or you, Michael wants okay. it. Okay, so do you think it's wrong if a man wants to build a business? And he Depen- doesn't, depends he what the business is. He does okay, okay, but w- whatever. It, for, and instead of pursuing women, he pursues his business. I instead think of that, pursuing a marriage and a family. I think it would be a mistake for a man to uh, pursue material good uh, to the exclusion of better goods. Okay, what about coaching? What about teaching? Like why? Well, I think I think our jobs in the commercial economy are good things, but right. I think modern liberalism and individual uh, uh, anthropologies. Uh, make an idol out of that, and that is to the harm of men. We, we, we shouldn't make an idol out of our jobs. I like well, my job a lot, but it's and, not my whole life. And the other problem you get into is, again, you know, just because a man has kids, it, it doesn't mean that the kids will... I mean, you have men raising kids that grow up to hate them. I mean, even in the story that I, that I showed you... It's bad, you, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> but, in, but, within marriage or divorce, you mean? Both. Or both. Yeah, both. both. I, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, kids get alienated from their fathers how? that are, you know, in the same household. It how happens does, all the time. How does it time. happen? I agree it happens. Well, I mean, the man's working, and so the mom spends more time with the kids. The mom's talking all day in the kid's ear. It's a really sad thing. So you're saying thing. the mom hates the dad? Yeah. That seems to be a problem that predates the alienation. No, it totally is. It, is. it totally is. And, you know, and the schools and the TV and everyone says the men are dolts and idiots. You know? Yeah, I agree. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's, that's my point is just because a man has kids, it doesn't mean his legacy will live on. No, again, I don't think the kids are the chief yeah. end of, of man in the world. Mm-hmm. But I do think it is a, a, an important aspect of it and an expression of it. And, and you, you can raise kids mm-hmm. who are likely not to hate you. There are things that you can do and things that you can uh, you know, avoid that mm-hmm. will increase that likelihood. I mean, that's, that's true, but there's no guarantees. And I think No guarantees of anything in this life, for all. And I think it's a higher risk. And I think I, I would really encourage you to spend a couple days in family court I, I think I think it would really. Yeah, I mean, I've, seen, I've had view. close friends who have been in brutal, brutal divorces. I mean, I've seen yeah. a, a little bit of it up close. It's dreadful. Yeah, and and at times, you know, they didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah, because, well, they've, they've women, all done something. If women, if women feel like yeah. leaving, they can leave. We can leave. They can, but how does the marriage break down? You know, it's like um, Hemingway describes bankruptcy, and the sun also rises. Mm-hmm. It happens gradually and then suddenly. Uh, so it seems to me, I, I'm not letting women off the hook. Sometimes crazy, you know, feminist ladies go nuts and divorce their husbands and poison, you know, the kids against their father. And they do all sorts of terrible things. But, uh, you know, marriage is a union of, of two people. And uh, I agree with you. A lot of people, when they get into marriage these days, including the men, especially the men, mm-hmm. uh, don't, not only don't know what they're signing up for, they don't even really have a vision of what they're signing up for. They don't even know what they want to be signing up Correct. for. And uh, so that's a mistake. That's an error on the part of the men often and of the women. But the men are the head of the household, so more responsibility falls onto them. And, uh, and then the way they lead their lives. I would say— But do they get authority to? Who do they give authority to? No, do, do the men have authority in their own households? In the good marriages, they do. Would you say that's the majority? Well, I don't know. I mean, these days people say that two men can be married. So, you know, p- people are very confused about what marriage is. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the real marriages and the flourishing marriages, uh, yeah, the men do have a what, headship. What percent of marriages do you think are happy after 50 years? Well, I, I, all I have to go by is the uh, general social survey and mm-hmm. some of the Chicago mm-hmm. studies that come as a result of that. And the evidence is that, uh, according, again, according to st- if, statistics if, and social If 50% science, divorce. Yeah, g- granted, anywhere from 40 to 50 percent divorce. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, according to the GSS, mm-hmm. which is probably the biggest data set we have on this, uh, the happiest people are men and women married with children, uh, followed why? by men and why? women married without children. Well, I'll come to that. Okay. Followed, by, uh, <laughs> followed by divorced parents um, 
with without children followed by divorced parents with mm-hmm. children. Um, and, and one Chicago study from last year showed the happiness gap between married and unmarried to be 30 points. So you're talking about, a, again, how do you measure happiness? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it's bunk, but well, as and, much as you can. And the men that get married are, tend to be tall. Hand, I mean, women select for tall, handsome, successful men. That's how I describe myself. All <laughs> but you, you see, so you're attributing it to marriage. And I'm, I'm saying the, the men that women pick are happy anyways. The, you're, you're saying happier people are more inclined to get married. No, no. That? Well, partially, but... No, I'm saying that women pick tall, handsome, successful men, and I would imagine that they would be happier. <laughs> because the men are hot and rich. <laughs> no, not hot. Why are you doing that? That's what you just said. Tall, tall handsome, handsome, successful, I said hot. happy. You said tall. We could add in okay. happy. To, I mean, do women tend to, you know, women tend to want tall, happy, successful men. So I wouldn't necessarily just attribute it to marriage, even though in some cases that helps. I'm, I'm having a little trouble following. You're saying because because the- you guys always you guys always attribute what you guys always attribute. If a man's happy, it's because of his marriage. I'm and just I'm saying, saying there ma- are other. I'm just saying factors. married people are, are okay, in as sorry, much as ahead. one can uh, in as much as one can can measure happiness. Married people seem to be significantly happier than unmarried people. Okay. Um, then but, men, but again, then even mental, then mental sign right up. I, you know, I don't. Men- I think I think people do things that are extremely perverse today because of. Um, largely because of individualism and liberalism. But, but even that word happiness is, is important because, you know, we say we can't measure happiness. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that we can define happiness now. Okay. What, you know, what do we even mean by happiness? Mm-hmm. I, have a, I have a definition that I go by, but okay. I, what, do, what do you mean by it? I guess I couldn't say definition off the top of my head. I see what you mean. Right? I mean, yeah. it could, so many people mean so many different things by it. Mm-hmm. I always go by good old Uncle Aristotle's definition of happiness as eudaimonia, which is a rational activity conducted in accordance with virtue. And so the reason I mention this is not just because I love, you know, the old dead thinkers, uh, but because I think they had something right that okay. will help to guide us through this very confused modern time. The way that you are describing marriage mm-hmm. seems to be from a from an unmoored perspective of an unwet unmoored meaning not grounded in something uh, uh, me- meaning uh, it's a little subjective it's a little uh, wishy washy men can do whatever they like you pick it's not some what people I said. have a different purpose <laughs> it's not what I said I thought you said men can do whatever they like that not, not I'm not going to wreck I th- you took issue with me for saying that I was coming to a moral judgment about how men no I, I think that every man I, every man has to decide for himself but I wouldn't recommend say like how should he decide. <laughs> Um, following, in an ideal world, following God and his purpose. Right. So following God and his, and how do we, how do we come to know our purpose? Mm, I, I mean, I think following God typically meant finding how, how do we God. follow God? Um, you know, going to church every Sunday, you know, praying. You know, I think there's ways that you can't, studying the Bible. Mm-hmm. But you know, and, I'm not. I'm not like a preacher. You know, you're but, not. The, yeah. the thing you keep leaving out. I agree. All those things are yeah, really good to do. Yeah. The thing you keep leaving out is reason, and it's the thing you keep taking issue with with yeah. me, where I keep saying marriage is a rational act. Uh, it was. Uh, I don't it, know if it is now. Uh, but it, even <laughs> though the laws are bad and the politicians are dummies, even still, it's a it's a rational act, uh, over and above the qualities of the state because of human nature. Because men and women are different because we are a rational creature, so we can uh, you know, mm-hmm. perceive of things like abstract justice. Animals can't do that. My, my whiskey glass can't do that. Uh, so we can do that. Men and women are different. We're not, like the feminists say, they say we're identical. We're not identical. I agree. We're not, and like the feminists and some of the, some it would seem of the red pill guys would, would imp- imply we're not totally opposed to one another cool. in our interests. The, uh, who, who would suggest this? Yeah, no, I just, you guys always say red pill guys. I never yeah. know who I don't like to give them airtime because I find them to be huge jerks and they have smaller audiences and I don't want to popularize <laughs> them. But I think we know some of the people that we're talking about. I think. Okay, okay. Uh, and and I, I, if you think it's an unfair characterization, yeah. please tell me. I think that- Well, I just, I don't, I don't de- speak for every red pill but, guy. But you're so. describing the, the interests of men and women as being quite mm-hmm. opposed. You've been talking about it this whole time. 
the you know the the mothers when they're staying the way the laws are the way the laws are today not just the laws the behaviors you're saying the mother at home is poisoning the children against their father it's very common right so anyway uh, that's the view I'm very common but uh, but again I don't think that that is ultimately the relation between men and women is hostile interests I think call me crazy and Mm old-fashioned I think that men and women are complementary. We're physically complementary with one another, and we are spiritually complementary with one another. I agree. And so when I say that uh, marriage is a rational activity, Mm -hmm. I mean that the fact that man is social, the fact that men and women are complementary, the fact that men and women are coupling creatures, and that it is in our interest at a very basic level to procreate, and therefore, and consequently to educate the children, uh, makes marriage a natural institution that uh, does not actually change no matter what the politicians say.